So you want to be able to remove control any computers. Then what we need to learn today is about reverse shells. It is a super cool way for us to be able to enter some commands over at the computer. And next thing you know, you're able to remotely control that computer. So as you can see here, we have a target computer that we are going after. So it could be a laptop or it could also be a desktop that you're targeting. Next thing we need is a hacker who is going to be able to target a computer by entering some piece of code onto the computer after which that gives them full control of the entire PC. I'll be going over into a site as well as a tool that allow us to easily create and generate those type of shells and code after which giving us remote control of those computers. The first thing we need to learn is exactly what are shells. So if you go over into your Windows computer, you go to the bottom left, you enter CMD. This is command prompt. You go ahead and hit enter on that. It has a pop-up and this pop-up is the one that we are going after. This is the one that allows us the ability to interact with the computer through a command line. So in this case, if I enter say DIR, it lists down all those different folders, files within the current working directory i can also enter things like say sys info or system info be able to get all this different processor information and information about the computer and if you're on linux or kyle linux you can go to the top left corner click on the terminal and you can see right here we have the terminal open up and i can say enter things like pwd to print working directory and so on and so forth so we are interacting with the computer through a command line and yes it makes it look really cool like a hacker now the problem is that if you are a hacker on the right side and what you do is that you scan against the target device you are going to get blocked out by the firewall. So what we need to do then is to create a malicious software that is then sent over into a computer, say through email, social media messages, and so on and so forth, or sometime depending on what type of computer it is, and the user clicks onto the link and that detonates the execution. This gives us remote control of that PC. Now the good news is that this is really easy to create now. Now, the first thing you can do is go over into your favorite browser. So in this case, I can go over into say Firefox. I run Firefox right now and I go to this website called refshells.com. So go ahead and enter that refshells.com. So this is an online reverse shell generator that we can easily use to help us generate those code as well as the listener in order for us to remotely control these PCs. The first thing you want to do is to be able to change the team from light to dark. I've already changed it over into dark so that you look like a hacker. One, you want to be able to set the IP and port. So in this case, the IP address is going to be your Kyle Linux IP address as well as the port number to be hosting the listener. Number two is the listener instruction. So in this case, we have several options and we will give you the code that gives you the instruction to set up the listener of your type. Number three, as you can see right at the bottom half, we have reverse, buy, MS of Venom, hook shell. So all these are different type of shells that you can set up. And of course, depending on the type of operating system that you want to target, such a neat solution. So now in this case, what I'll do is open up terminal and I'll enter the following of IP ADDR to get my IP address. So in this case, my IP address is as follow of 192.168.0.117. So this is the Kali Linux IP address. So we have already set the IP address as well as the target port number. The next thing we can see here is the type. So we have several types that we can use as part of setting up the listener. So in this case, we have MSF console, which is going to be using Metasploit or Metapreter or any other potentially type of payloads or different type of listeners that we want to set. So in this case, that depends on what you set on the bottom number three. So in this case, I can say NC for Netcat. So this is something easier in terms of instructions, All right? So that is something we can set forth. The next step is to look at the OS. So in this case, we have operating system. I'll select onto Windows. So we're targeting a Windows computer or Windows device, and we can send a payload over to the user. The user click execute onto the file. That's it, it's game over. We gain control of the operating system. So in this case, we have several options right here. And the one that I more specifically want to target is going to be those under PowerShell. The reason why is because PowerShell is going to be available for any of these Windows computer, and we can use it. And we send it over to the user. They run this PowerShell script that gives us control over into the PC. So all we can do right now is copy the following script and we can go ahead and open up terminal and I can say set all right and I create a file maybe I can call this touch a PowerShell reverse dot PS1 with the extension of PS1 which stands for PowerShell script extension so that the computer can load it with that I can go ahead and say enter mouse pad all right PowerShell reverse dot PS1 oops let me go ahead and enter the one of the extension all right don't save and then followed by dot ps1 hit enter on that paste the following information here save it close it done all we got to do right now is go ahead and send this file over copy the file say powershell reverse dot ps1 over into say var www html slash hit enter on that cannot create regular file permission denied let's enter super user do enter the password for super user hit enter on that done what we can do now is go ahead and host our server 
so that the user, when they click onto the link, they will download the file. All right, so go ahead and enter sudo systemctl start apache2.service, hit enter on that. All right, enter the following of status. Let's see whether we have the web server running. So we do, it's active and running right here. So what we want to do now is go back over into refshells.com, copy the listener instructions, copy on that, go over terminal, paste it over here, hit enter on that. So our listener is started and waiting right now. Now go over into the target Windows computer, and in this case, you go and open a browser, target into call Linux IP address, as well as the file name they're going after. And once you hit enter on that, it will ask you to save the file. So in this case, I'm going to save it over into desktop, click save on that, done. So click over into the desktop, and we have the PowerShell reverse.ps1, right click, run with PowerShell, click open, and boom, if I head back over into Kali Linux, you can see right here, we now have connection. I can enter DIR, I can enter PWD, print working directory, I can enter who are you. Okay, just kidding, there isn't such a command. So yes, we're in, it's game over. We can also try other interesting type of payloads as well as listeners. So in this case, let's go ahead and head over to MSF Venom. So in this situation, I'm going to use the following of Windows Meterpreter staged it reverse TCP. I'll go ahead and copy the following over here open up a terminal and I can paste it right here, hit enter on that. So this will set up a reverse.exe that we can send over into the user. So now that we have the file, all I gotta do is enter sudo, all right, followed by reverse, followed by copy, reverse.exe over to var, www.html, hit enter on that. All right, so this will help us copy the file into our website. And on the top right corner, what I'll do is set the listener. In this case, let's go ahead and select onto MSF console. Let's go ahead and copy the instructions right here, copy that. And what I can do now is open up terminal. All right, paste it, hit enter on that. So this will start up our listener using Metasploit. And once the user double click onto the reverse.exe, that's it, it's game over. So I'm heading back over into the Windows computer and you can see right here with 192.168.0.117 slash reverse.exe. So let's go ahead and execute on that. So once you hit enter on this, it will ask you to download. Let's go ahead and click save file and we can have the file over here now. And you can see that this is the file reverse2.exe. So I've downloaded several of them earlier. Double click on that. All right, click more info, click run anyways. Once you hit back over in Call Linux, you can see right here, we have the interpreter session, and that's it, we are in. I can enter help, I can see all these different type of instructions, I can enter shell, so this gives a shell over into the computer, I can enter DIR to see all those different folders, files within the current working directory, so we are in. We have full complete control of the entire computer. Next up, we have a website running, and what we're gonna do now is to target some vulnerabilities within the site. Say in this case, we have a SQL injection vulnerability, so where we can target and input put different type of SQL injection. And not only that, SQL injection and SQL commands could potentially allow us to place our code over into the site. And then after which we can execute on the code, giving us control of the web server. So the first payload we have here is a SQL injection vulnerability. And then what we do is we union select over into another part through the SQL database. And in this case, we can load file of at C possibility to see us what can we get using the SQL database system. So now heading over to the website, we have the payload search for a movie. I click on search and you can see the result right here. We're able to get all this information regarding the users in the operating system. The next payload we have here is to take advantage of the SQL injection one more time. And here we have the code, which will then be output over into TAM shell.php, which will then target it for execution. So in this case, this code over here will use the netcat targeting the IP address call Linux followed by the port and bean bash for the executable. So once you're ready, go ahead and click on search on this and you can see right here, error file tam loyshell.php already exists. So I have already executed this before and that file now exists within the tam directory. Now we have another payload over here. It is targeting a different part of the site and this is called the remote file inclusion attack. So this allow us to target a different part of the site which then gets executed on our behalf, giving us the reverse shell. And as you can see here, I have already created my reverse shell using netcat and we are listening. So you can see right here, if I entered the following URL, which is the target loyshell.php. So once we execute on this, this will give us the remote connection over into the website. So in three, two, one, hit enter on that. And I hit back over in terminal. You can see right here, connect to enter print working directory, enter ls, we're in.
It's game over. We have full remote control of the entire website right now. The final tool I want to teach you is called the hack tools. This will also provide us different type of reverse shells instructions as part of hacking. And once you have downloaded that, you go to the top right corner, you can click onto your extensions, click onto hack tools. This will open up the extension. As you can see right here, we have reverse shell, we have PHP, and all these different type of instructions that you can easily copy and paste from to be able to run your code against a target computer. So this is it. You have learned something useful. You have learned something valuable as part of cybersecurity career and I hope you use it for good. With great power comes great responsibility.